Hey guys, I device help here and today I'm going to share with you guys some of the hidden tricks and new features built into iOS 11 all wrapped into one. I'm also going to be talking a little bit about iPad. So let's go ahead and begin. Now the first hidden feature I want to talk about is under the accessibilities option here in settings. If we go to the assistive touch here and turn it on, once you enable it, you find that on your home screen now when you go to devices here under the uh, bubble for assistive touch, you have a restart. Now it, it allows your device to restart directly from uh, the accessibilities feature built into iOS, which it wasn't possible before. In addition to that, you also have a new reachability, Apple Pay option, and SOS right there built into the new accessibilities feature. Under accessibilities and Siri options, we have two new options. Right here we have the type. So when you invoke Siri, you now enter your uh, questions or whatever it is that you wanted to say uh, using the keyboard instead of just talking to her. Now you also have a voice feedback right here where Siri will always reply to you unless you select this option or hands-free option. So if we tap here on control with ring switch, so if I put the switch back, which makes the device uh, mute or silent, uh, when I talk to Siri, hello Siri, she won't give me a voice feedback. She would just give me the feedback on the screen just like that. Or you can use hands free or you can use always and then she will reply to you using voice. Now Siri has also gotten smarter. You can ask her to translate things in various languages. Hey Siri, how do you say how are you in Spanish? ¿Cómo estás? So there you go. Now there's a few options here under accessibilities that give you the ability to change how you receive calls. So call audio routing. Right here you have automatic Bluetooth or speaker. So when you get an incoming call, it goes to either one of those or just set it to automatic. Uh, you also have the auto answer calls. This new feature here allows you to automatically answer calls and say, let's say you have it set to speaker, auto answer a call within three seconds of ringing. Let's say you're gonna be busy and you are not be able to answer with your hand you maybe you're working on your car or something like that and you have your phone automatically answer if you have an important call coming and then you have the auto call come in through the speaker so very useful options here for incoming calls on iOS 11 now throughout the initial setup process of iOS 11 Apple looks to be opening the NFC chip to allow access to other devices so if you're setting up a device you can go ahead and use this new option here to transfer information with very similar as a setup when you set Set up an Apple Watch. You ever seen the little bubble in the center of the Apple Watch when you go to set it up for the first time? Well, that's what it looks like. And then I guess you can just go ahead and put the image and frame of the other iPhone's camera because the camera now has a QR code readers and things like that built in, which I'll show you in a few minutes. And you can see here that you can scan another iPhone uh, just to kind of send that information over. So it looks like Apple is looking to open up NFC a little bit more this time around, not only for Apple Pay. So very useful. When you're multitasking, you can still access any any other applications that are open on other devices you can see here open on my iPad I have Safari I can tap into there so when you multitask now you have the ability to choose those options instead of dragging it up as we did with iOS 10 now it requires you to tap onto that and whatever it is that you're doing on another device say an iPad you can now continue doing on your iPhone and find that through your multitasker on iOS 11 I'm gonna give you guys about five seconds to spot the difference can you spot it Right there, take a photo, take a portrait. iOS 10, iOS 11. Now it gives you the option to go into portrait mode. So portrait mode is now being featured on the 3D touch options of the iPhone 7 Plus in iOS 11. In the notes application, you now have the ability to swipe left and you can go ahead and passcode protect any particular note or create a folder or delete it right then and there with a new menu that pops up for your notes uh, management. SOS emergency is now available, of course, stock within iOS 11. But if you turn it off and you click on the power button five times, you now get a new menu here, slide to power off, slide medical ID, or slide for emergency SOS. So medical ID would be your medical ID set up on your iOS device, of course, and then you have your emergency SOS to contact emergency service or power off. However, if you turn the feature on, so if you enable it and you do the same thing, you get a countdown and it goes directly to calling the uh, emergency services and it's contacting you, uh, your uh, whoever you have as your primary uh, contact information there as well. So right there is two different options with the uh, new SOS built into iOS 11 so if you have it enabled then it'll automatically go ahead and call emergency service if you don't it gives you the option for medical ID 
or SOS. Remember how I talked about earlier Apple maybe open up an NFC with the uh, new feature built into the setup process of the iPhone? Well, right here, if say you have a friend that comes over, you're using your iPhone or your iPad on your home network, and your friend wants to log in, they tap into your network, don't know the password, they can actually request a password from you uh, through your iPad, and your iPad will recognize that, send the password without having to even say the password, just share the password, the device will connect, and then again, I believe that's all going to be done through NFC because it requires you to be close or either Bluetooth in combination with NFC. So very cool feature here to share the passwords of your networks with friends and family. And remember how I said the camera now has a built-in QR code reader. So all you have to do is place your, uh, go ahead and place anything in front of the camera while you're in photos and it will scan the QR code just like that. Make sure it is in photos as you saw there. And when I tap into it, it will take me to the QR code directly within Safari to use in this case, a gift card. By the way, speaking of cameras, have you noticed that photos and camera now have their own separate tabs? Right here you have the preserved settings that we talked about before with iOS 10.2. Uh, right here we have a format. You can choose different formats and auto save options as well. But now right here is a new button for the QR code reader as I just mentioned. And you have also a grid option. So when you enable the grid, if you go into the camera and you go ahead and place your iPhone here sideways, hopefully I can get this to work. Let me move this camera around. So you see there in the center of the screen, an X that appears that if you are leveled, then it shows you that you're leveled. It's kind of hard to see in uh, camera here. Hopefully you guys can see that. So that is a new thing built in to iOS 11. It took me a while to get that to work. So hopefully you guys use that, I guess. But there you guys have it. That is some of the new features built into the new uh, camera application in iOS 11. So now I wanna go ahead and shift my attention over to iOS 11 on iPad. There's some exclusive new features here as well. So if you swipe directly from the bottom of the screen, you see here that I can go into the multitasker here into the menu you as well if I go into Safari here you see that the icon there for the suggested applications changes to Safari because I'm using that on my iPhone and if I leave it there you go so the same thing applies to mail changes to mail so pretty cool features built in to iOS 11 on iPad now you also have a new a form of input keyboard here for the iPad if you see right here the letter Y if I swipe down it turns into the six so new keyboard gestures for the iPad as well let's say I'm in the App Store I can invoke the dock by simply swiping up and I can also go into the multitasker by simply doing this split screen view change the split screen just like that or eliminate any applications just by swiping it away so a lot of high-end or a lot of pro user features come into the iPad here now you have a tap and hold to see files which it looks like it's not working just yet but Apple demoed it you just tap and hold and you see files that you can just tap and drag and drop around the screen to different applications using the new drag and drop feature built into iOS 11. You also have some additional features for iPad that you can move icons around without having to go into edit mode. You see here I can just move things around. It's not in edit mode. It's just moving and relocating icons around. As I mentioned, the dock here you have the right part of the dock which is going to be suggested apps and apps running on other devices. And on the left is your favorite apps. And you can place as many apps on the dock this time around as you wish. So unlimited apps for the dock here on the iPad as well. And there you guys have it. That about brings it into this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to click that like button. Much more videos coming your way. Be sure to stay tuned. It's been iDevice Help, and I'll see you guys real soon. Peace.